We've had a lot of clouds across Catalina, but some sunshine is punching through, warming us up. And with a southeast breeze, it's going to remain mild, warm tonight, even in Sioux Falls. Overnight low temperature here in the big city, 63, 66 in Aberdeen. Up here in Rapid City, could have some thunderstorms this evening. Now a severe thunderstorm watch has been issued for western South Dakota this evening. After that, tomorrow we'll have a partly cloudy, breezy day. Now we're talking to south wind. will warm it up a bit. 81 Sioux Falls, 85 Aberdeen, 89 up here at Rapid City, 91 degrees. It's going to be even hotter for the upcoming weekend. Details on that in just a few minutes. Kelloway News first and four starts now. Live from Kelloland Media Group. Kelloland News first at four. Coming up, we take a look at a preliminary report for a deadly plane crash near Irene last month. Plus, we hear from a central Iowa family struggling, struggling to rebuild after a May tornado. And why a Texas teenager is trekking hundreds of miles to Washington, D.C. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. An Alcester woman is heading to federal prison and will have to pay back hundreds of thousands of dollars after pleading guilty to wire fraud. A judge sentenced 57-year-old Michelle Warner to two years behind bars, followed by three years of supervision. She will also have to pay over $261,000 in restitution. Officials say that from June of 2018 through May of 2022, Warner worked for Heartland Counseling Services and paid herself unauthorized payroll payments. Federal officials have released a preliminary report on last month's deadly plane crash in Yankton County. The uh, Yankton County Sheriff's Office says first responders were called to the crash just before 8 a.m. on July 31st near Irene. Authorities later identified the victim as 67-year-old Charles Schneider of Sioux Falls. The report says that the plane caught fire after it crashed. It also says that there was a quarter mile visibility and fog with ceilings broken at 200 feet and overcast at 1,900 feet. You can find the full breakdown of the report on Kettleland.com. A Huron man has been identified in a deadly motorcycle crash in the northwestern part of town last weekend. Authorities say 31-year-old Matthew John Walker was heading north when he went into a ditch. He was thrown from the motorcycle, which then caught on fire. Walker died from his injuries. Residents of Davison, Lincoln, Turner, and Union counties can get personal disaster assistance now from FEMA starting this week. The FEMA teams will be working with state and county emergency management officials. Residents who lost homes or received damage from recent severe storms, straight line winds and flooding will be assisted with the application process. For more information on how to apply, just check out this story on Kettleland.com. Oh, well, more gloomy weather today. A little foggy out there, or cloudy out there, I should say, but the humidity still feels a little sticky out there. Yeah, we've had some hazy sunshine, and Don, yeah, southeast wind does generally increase humidity by bringing in more moist air. Right now in Sioux Falls, yeah, we do have some hazy sunshine out there. Current temperature is well below normal, 74 degrees. With that southeast wind at 21 miles an hour. A normal high this time of year, 82, so way below normal. Up in Aberdeen, you can see we do have some higher clouds there. 74 degrees, south breeze at 17 miles per hour. In Pier, 78, there's a brisk east wind. And you know what they say about east winds? Well, we could see some thunderstorms later on tonight, western into central South Dakota. Right now, Rapid City, north wind at 15, 89 degrees. Rapid City, you are now under a severe thunderstorm watch. Just been issued for the western third of South Dakota till 10 o'clock mountain time tonight. Damaging winds, maybe 70 miles an hour and some isolated hail to perhaps ping pong ball size. So severe thunderstorm watch is there. But here you see the temperatures. Phillips at 97. Rapid City's, as I said, at 89. It's much cooler here in the eastern part of Kelloland. But the arrows show that southeast wind feeding into these storms. Now, right now, we really don't have much going on. There are a few very small little thunderstorm seeds. North uh, central South Dakota looks like Mobridge. You might be getting one of those. Redfield, perhaps a spot shower on western South Dakota. We've already seen some strong storms over in Wyoming. They are now moving east. Nothing severe, not 
yet. We do have for tonight lows in the 60s in the east, around 70 in Pierre. Thunderstorms this evening, western and central South Dakota could be strong or severe. The southeast wind is going to keep us warm tonight, then a brisk south wind tomorrow is going to warm us up a bit. 81 Sioux Falls, 85 Aberdeen, 89 in Pierre, 91 in Rapid City. Sioux Falls, we can see a spotty thunderstorm tomorrow night into Thursday. Uh, Friday morning. Not really expecting that to be severe. Details on all that in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Jay. Iowans were devastated by various storms this spring, including a severe tornado that hit Story County between Cambridge and Nevada in May. One family is still struggling to secure funds to rebuild. Todd Mago with our CBS affiliate in Des Moines explains. Living through a tornado and having nearly destroy your home is bad enough, but now the family who owns this house has another big problem. It's stressful. I'm over it. <laughs> if Tracy Lesher didn't laugh, she would probably cry. Those two sets of windows over will all come out. She gave us a tour of what's left of her tornado damaged home in Cambridge. We were here the day after it hit in May. The shredded garage is the first thing you notice that day. It's been demolished with only a concrete pad left. Basically, this whole section of my house will come out, has to come out. The rest of the home is still standing, but it's in bad shape. And that's the problem. After 13 weeks, nothing has been repaired. Liberty Mutual is our insurance company, and they have been a very little help. Lesher says they've been unable to get a damage estimate. It's extremely frustrating. We're in limbo. Uh, we're living in a rental. Uh, my neighbor has completely demoed his house, uh, put up a brand new Morton building, completely framed his house with a shingled roof, windows and doors in, and look at my place. She's made more than a dozen calls to a Liberty Mutual adjuster, you know, but isn't having yeah, any luck. You know. She's even complained to the Iowa Insurance Division. I don't understand why these insurance companies are not being held to uh, standards where they have to do something for us in a timely manner. We pay our premiums every month. Lesher wonders if other tornado victims are having similar issues and feel as desperate as she does. I'm just fed up. We reached out to Liberty Mutual, but a spokesperson says they are not able to discuss their customers' claims. In Cambridge, Todd Magel, KCCI 8 News, Iowa's News Leader.